jacket back. I prefer it. I'm not sure I can play in this one. No, we've been through all that already. You're wearing your white new gear tonight. And talking about tonight, it's only an hour away. So if you don't mind, could we start? You lot ready? Yeah. One, two, a one, one, two, three, four! Hang on, hold it, hold it. It's not working, Harry. Now, I told you before, you get rid of Tony. This is the third time in three weeks he hasn't had my gear fixed up. It's a power off, will you? I'll get it! It's too bloody late. Hello, and welcome to Who Done It and our panel with our resident panelists, Ms. Anushka Hempel and Mr. Patrick Moa. Right. We also have with us Miss Paula Wilcox and her man about the house, Mr. Richard O'Sullivan. <laughs> In the audience, we have four amateur detectives who are going to pit their wits against our panel. Welcome. And incidentally, whether you win or not, we want our pencils back. All right? <laughs> Poor Ron, lead singer of the Weasels, has now gone to join the great top 20 in the sky. Harry, their manager, expecting foul players, called the police. And we now go back to the scene of the crime to see how Detective Inspector Martin and Sergeant Lawler are getting on with their investigations. Yeah, yeah, all right, Sergeant. Thank you. Well, I've set up this equipment hundreds of times, Inspector. I don't know how many gigs we've done. And how long have you been with the group? Since they started, June 1972. Three years. You know, I drive them around, take the birds' phone numbers and fix up the gear. And what did you do before? I worked in an electrical shop. Oh, I'd never wire up a plug like that. It must have been tampered with. Well, tell me exactly what uh, caused the shock. Yeah, well, it's dead simple, really. Someone's tampered with that plug and they changed all the connections so that Ron's guitar and his microphone are live, but they're not working. Now, Ron's holding the guitar, he taps the microphone, completes the circuit, bang! Goodly. End of number. When did you uh, set up this equipment? Oh, I don't know exactly. Uh, we got into town about half past three. They went to the hotel, and I came to set up. So you'd connected all the equipment before they got here? Oh, yeah, right. Like I always do. Tested it. Then they came to rehearse. Well, didn't anybody check what you'd done? No. Why should they? They went to the dressing room to change. I see. And what did you do? Uh, well, I checked Dave's drum stool, and then I joined him in the dressing room. And then? Well, then we came out and it happened. Yeah, but what did you do in the dressing room? Just helped him change. Hung about, that's all. I see. All right, that'll be all for now, thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Harry Cook. Yeah? I believe you're the manager of this group. That's right. I'd just like to ask you a few questions, Mr. Cook. Uh, coming, Lola. I'll just remain here until you're called. Stay here, go there, I don't know. Yeah? Uh, I found these, sir, in this um, uh, lady's handbag. Now, you'll notice that this glove has glitter on it. And so does the screwdriver handle. Any idea how the glitter got here? Ah, back of the stage, sir, near the plug. 
It came off that uh, backcloth that was painted this morning. That's interesting. That suggests, then, that these gloves were used to tamper with the wiring. Anything else? Aye, sir. The ring, sir. Found near the plug. Look, Inspector, when can I go out and see the press? Won't be a moment, sir. This yours by any chance? No, could be any of them. They all, they all wear them. Look, we've missed out on tonight's performance and I'd really like to get out Mr. there. Mr. Cook, one of your group was dead. Murdered. Yes. But at least whoever did it picked the right one. Meaning what? Well, Ron was for the chop anyway. I, I just manage the group on a percentage, right? But I make all the decisions and, well, Ron wasn't pulling his weight. In fact, he was getting rather heavy. Uh huh? Why? Hey, he got too big for his boots. He thought he was a star. I mean, the weasels were never very big anyway. What, one sharp topper about two years ago and then nothing. And what would his death mean for the future? Fantastic publicity, replacement by Jim, the bass guitarist as lead, and more financial backing. Financial backing? Yeah, well, you see, one of the big recording companies are very, very interested in building up Jim. That's why we had the uh, new costumes today, the gentle levelling down of Ron. Before, Ron wore a bright blue suit. And all the lads, well, they wore these, you see, weasel. Well, imitation, really. And now, we've all got that new white gear for them. So, nobody stands out, except for their talent. And the talented one is Jim, the bass guitarist. You better believe it. And when you've got it, all you need's a chance. Yeah. Would you mind telling me what you did from the moment you arrived? Yeah, OK. Hi, we all came in together by the back entrance from the car park yeah, and straight yeah, into yeah, here. But I was carrying the new jackets. One room between the four of us? That's right. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely yeah, fantastic. Then the One boys room. put them on when I handed them out. Are these Look, Harry, I don't think we should all be wearing the same gear. Oh, Why not? Dear, we all do the same amount of work. Do we? Do we really? I'm going to look like the abominable snowman in this. Look, you're wearing this gear tonight. If it doesn't look right, we'll change it, OK? Where's my blue suit? And that black and white gear. Safe in the car, OK? We're going to wear this gear tonight, and if it doesn't look right, we can change it. Harry. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Look, if they're wearing all white, I'd look better in something different. I'm wearing the black and white gear tonight to do the comparing. If anybody's going to look different, it's going to be me. Oh, Typical. Well, Tony, is the gear in the back of my car or in the back of the van? Car. Right, I'll go and get it. I know which one fits me. They're a better cut than the old stuff anyway. Is that a real weasel? <laughs> of course. I shot it myself in the North Pole. <laughs> then I came out here. Sorted through the old jackets and found mine. We're out of the car, not the van. That's right, out of the car. Yeah, I went out to the car park round the back where my car was parked, and took out a jacket from the boot, and came back here. Well, it can't have been more than a couple of minutes. What are we bumbling about at now? I'm just going to check the drum stool. Oh, could you get a move on? I'd like to start work. Who else left the room when you were all in here? Oh, Jim and Jenny. Well, she was having trouble with her trousers and needed a hand. But they are married. Married? Yeah. So they'd both benefit from Ron's death. That's if Jim took over the lead. Well, I suppose so, if you want to labour it. Is this Jenny's handbag? Yeah. Do you smoke? No, thank you. Mm. I want to live as long as possible. Funny. That's what Ron said. And he'd just given it up. Welcome back to Who Done It, where our panel of experts are trying to solve who killed the lead singer in the band of weasels. Now, just to remind you who they are, 
That's Ron, or rather was. Dave on drums, Jenny on the organ, and Jim on bass guitar. Now that sinister looking man is Tony the Gopher. You know, he goes for this and goes for that. And the young man with the frown is Harry the manager. And with the noise they're making, you'd, I'd be frowning as well, I think. But all is quiet now as we go back to the scene of the crime to find out who made the weasel go pop. And here's a clue. It's not Anthony Newley. <laughs> so you, uh, you both came in through the back entrance and then you came in here where you started changing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Then we both went outside because I had to get into the strides. I beg your pardon? Trousers. So where did you change? Well, just out there in the corridor. Third time, One, lucky. Two, three, go. Go. Gently does it. I'm breathing in. Oh, right, there you are. Goodness. They look all right. Beautiful. Splendid. Right. Come on. <laughs> Do you uh, always wear those rings? No. No, I only wear mine with the gear. I can't get mine off, see? Harry wanted us to change to another colour when we got the all white gear, but it won't come off, look. Uh huh. We even thought of calling the fire brigade. Yeah. Well, that's all right for now, thank you. Thanks. Any bright ideas, Sergeant? No, sir. Slipping gloves on with them rings wouldn't be easy, though. No, but slipping rings off for one of them wouldn't be a problem. No way. No, no must way. have done. It was no. afternoon. I'd uh, like a few words with Dave. You uh, don't wear a ring like the others. Yeah, yeah, I normally do, but uh, I lost mine. When? I don't know. Uh, I had it when I came in, but uh, when I put this white jacket on, I didn't. Did you find it? Is this it? Yeah, right. Where was it? Uh, it's Lucy. Look, I'm, I'm always losing it. In fact, I, uh, I left the dressing room to look for it. And, you know, in case I dropped it on the way in. Why, does that make me number one suspect, then? Not unless you had a motive. <laughs> Harry didn't tell you. Well, look, Jenny and I have got this good scene going, right? Hmm. You know, an affair, man? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Ron found out and was blackmailing me. He, he threatened to tell her husband, Jim. Well, I mean, naturally, I don't want Jim to find out because he's my best mate. Well, naturally. What kind of blackmail? Well, how much? Go on, tell me. Half of what I had earned. It'd break the band up if Jim found out. He'd break me up. Ron knew that. Oh, I'm glad it happened. I got so paranoid. I didn't let me left hand know what my right hand was doing. I'll tell you this. If it had gone on, I'd have taken the pills and OD. Do you know who killed Ron, then? I do know. Something you've just said confirms it. Now, did something that Dave just said confirm your suspicions? Now, whilst our resident panel and our guests puzzle it out, let's welcome the suspects, shall we? Here they are. Yay! Right, panel, before you cross-examine our suspects, you are allowed to ask for an instant replay of any of the action that you've seen so far. So, let's start with you, Paula Wilcox. What would you like to see again? Um... I think I'd like to see the bit where um, Jim and Jenny come out of the dressing room um, when he's doing her trousers up. <laughs> when and they, Jim and they, Jenny come out of the they, dressing room doing up the trousers. Yeah, and then yeah. they pop back in again. Right, Paula, so you shall. Thank you. Richard, what would you like to see again? Um, I'd like to see the rubber gloves bit again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Richard would like to see the rubber gloves bit again. <laughs> Can and the rubber duck bit as well. <laughs> Can rubber we glove. Why? Right. I'm into heavy into rubber gloves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard. Yes, Anushka. Yes, I'm into rubber gloves as well. But oh, uh, oh. oh. <laughs> we'll nice have something else. Cute. Yeah. Oh, I want no rubber your, gloves you can again. You see his rubber glove bit as well. Yes, but I want my own rubber glove bit. Oh, another bit. Um, when the gloves and the screwdriver on the table, when the sergeant's sort of chatting about them when he's interrogating everybody. Mm hmm. Please. Right. You're welcome. Uh, yes, sir. What would you like? Uh, I'd like to see the bit where the our intrepid inspector says to Dave, is it the drummer, um, thank you very much for giving me the last bit of my jigsaw puzzle. Please. That scene there. That scene there. 
Yes. Right, so you shall. Good. Fine. <coughs> well, uh, while we find those, uh, let's have one question each. Uh, may I remind you that only the guilty party is allowed to lie. All the rest will tell the truth. Paula, let's have a question from you, please. Right, well, I'm going to start off by asking Jenny a question. And I want to know, um, you know those rings and things that you wear for the show? Yeah. Do you wear them all the time, all of you? Or just for the shows? I do, you in particular, because I can't get mine off. But I don't know about the others, the others in their personal life. Well, they, you don't know? No. You've never noticed whether they take them off or not? What, in rehearsals? Yeah. yeah um, sometimes, yeah. Right. Because I mean, presumably you always wear them. Um, during the show. During the show. Yeah, we always wear them during the show. Yeah. I can't get mine off. Yeah. So I wear mine all the time. But the others might do. Yeah. And where would they be kept, do you think? What, when we're not wearing them? Yeah. Tony. Right. Sure. Ask Tony later. All right, Paula? Yes. Oh, ask him now if he feels so inclined. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you'll Richard, get a Wait, turn, Robin you'll get a turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, go on. Uh, no, Tony, I wanted to ask you, really, what, what your job really entailed. It, really everything? And yeah, then... driving, fixing up the gear. So where do you keep the rings and things? Oh, I lock do them they, up. Do they give them back well, to you? Well, if they want me to look show? after them, if they particularly want me to look after yeah. them, they give them to me, you know, and I lock them up with the rest of the gear. And do they, mostly, give them to you at the end of the show? Well, occasionally, if, they, if they're worried about losing them. But I see. It varies, you know. All right, Paula? Okay. Good, fine. Ready, rubber gloves? Certainly. Uh, uh, I'd like to ask Dave a question. Uh, Dave, uh, d you've had a number one record, haven't you? Uh, yeah. W w um, can you tell me, I don't think we heard, what, what the name of the record was called? Uh, it, was, uh, it was called Bullet. <coughs> it sort of shot up in the charts. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Would you like him to sing it? <laughs> no, thank you. And I just want one very quick question. Yeah. Um, have you always, when you've been playing the drums, have you always had the hi hat on the left hand side of the kit, or have you? Uh... Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> what a clue! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good. Thank you, Anushka. A question from you, please. Yes, I'd like to ask Harry why he had to go back to the car. I had to go and pick up the jackets. Yeah, but why didn't you do that all in one go when you got all the rest of the stuff out? No, mine. Your jacket. Well, why yeah. didn't you get yours at the same time? Well, it was in the boot. Yeah, but you had everybody carrying everything for you and organising Oh, right. Everybody. Yeah, well, I mean, so Tony why? puts all the stuff into the car for me. And all the old stuff was put in the boot because we only picked up the new jackets that day. I so see. all the old stuff was in there in case the new jackets weren't ready because they I were see. fitted up for them and had all their photographs taken. All right, thank you very <coughs> much. Patrick? Yes, I'd like to start off with a reprimand, actually, again, for this Inspector Martin. Um, when I did my basic training as a policeman, we were always taught to be very careful about all the, the things we picked up with fingerprints on. Um, you seem to be handling them all over the place. Uh, is there any way, can you tell me, that... Uh, did you check for fingerprints, first of all, on the screwdriver and the gloves? Um... I'm sure don't you don't give anything away that you don't want. No, we'd already been told that there were no fingerprints on the plug, and of course you can't leave fingerprints with rubber gloves. But you'd, if you're going to put rubber gloves on, surely you, you handle them, don't you? To, you didn't, it didn't occur to you. Well, in your police training, do you know if you can leave fingerprints on the inside of rubber gloves? Maybe your sergeant would know better than you. We'll ask my sergeant, sir. <laughs> is, it, is it possible, sergeant, to extract or take off uh, fingerprints from rubber gloves? Uh, they don't, you don't get... Um, you didn't. So we may Thank conclude you. that you didn't find any fingerprints on the gloves. So no, and I must uh, say that in actual fact, everything I handled there, I did handle with either a handkerchief or the screwdriver. I only handled the tip of it where there would be no fingerprints. Thank you very much indeed. We're ready now for the first playback, which is Richard O'Sullivan's. You asked for a replay of the teaser uh, when we saw the rubber-gloved hands doing the dirty deed with the plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being a man about the house, you should know all about rewiring plugs. <laughs> so let's see what you make of this. How's that? You really enjoyed that, didn't you? Can I say it again? 
But has it helped you at all in more ways than that? Well, it's all over. Yes, it's all over. All over. Have you right. got it? Good. You've got it. You've got it. Thank Splendid. you. Splendid. <laughs> well, shut up about it for the time being. <laughs> uh, can I ask... Uh, oh, sorry. Of course you can ask a question. Can I ask Jenny a question? Yes, of course. Um, how long have you been having this affair with um, uh, uh, Dave? Ten months. And how long have you been married to Jim? Two years. Two years. And this is fairly sort of normal behaviour, is it? On your part. <laughs> So what are you insinuating? Well, I just wondered about the rest of the group, you know, whether... Well, oh, yes, I wanted to know so you were having may. an affair with Harry as well. Oh, no, 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 just no, Dave. She wasn't. One at a time. You know. no, it, was just, <laughs> no, it, was, it was just a privileged ticket, two for the price of one. Oh, I see. And did, uh, did you, do you think that Jim had any suspicion that, in fact, you were having an affair with... No, I don't think he and had any about, suspicion about Dave. I what think about he the other members suspicion. of the group? Did they, any of them have any suspicion, do you think? Ron knew. Ron knew. Ron knew. Ron was blackmailing mm. Dave. You knew that, did you? Yeah. Did you? Uh, Ron's dead. But, um, <laughs> you... Uh, so you didn't tell anybody else, though, in your group, that? No, blackmailing Dave. Ah, I see. So everybody knew, except Jim. Jim didn't know. I don't think Harry knew. Ron. Harry didn't know. Ron oh. knew, and he was blackmailing us, because we were at school with Ron. I see. It's a very involved setup, isn't it? <laughs> yes, Richard. I, I just want to ask Jenny, actually. Yes. Jenny, how... how, how how long have you been on the organ? <laughs> Since, um, about four years, just before we started the group, I used to tinkle, you know. <laughs> dabble, just dabble. And it, is it the, the same organ you've had all the time? I mean, is it, I mean, I didn't see... <laughs> is it a Richard twin manual or single manual? The last time that is you were on this, pa this panel, you, were, you got very held up with the ladies' cherries. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, I just want to know whether it's a twin manual or a single manual. Twin. Twin, twin manual. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God we kept it technical. Right, any more questions, please? Um, oh, wait a minute. No, no, no more questions for the time being. We have the next replay. Anushka, um, now, while well, we... Are ready for your free replay now. You were asked to see where Inspector Martin takes a look at the rubber gloves and screwdriver that were found in Jenny's handbag. So, here it is. I, I found these, sir, in this um, uh, lady's handbag. Now, you'll notice that this glove has glitter on it, and so does the screwdriver handle. Any idea how the glitter got here? Ah, back of the stage, sir, near the plug. It came off that uh, back cloth that was painted this morning. That's interesting. That suggests, then, that these gloves were used to tamper with the wiring. Anything else? <coughs> right. How's that? Anything else he ended up with? Uh, <laughs> um, mm. Yes, thank you very much. I have no more Is that all? Yes, for a minute. Yes. I'd like to ask, um, if I may, the, uh, in, the, the sergeant a question. Where, in fact, um, you looked sort of a bit sort of dishevelled. I keep I'm not I don't moan about the police all the time. Did you where did you find the screwdriver and the gloves? Uh, I found the um, uh, the ring near the plug and the uh, screwdriver and the uh, gloves in the ladies' handbag. And where was the ladies' handbag? Ah, uh, that were in the dressing room. When you did you look in all of the handbags of all the <laughs> different members of the group? <laughs> I think you're being personal, sir. Mm -hmm. now, did anything lead you to look into the ladies' handbag? That's what I'm asking. Well, it was there on the on the table. Yes. Huh? Hmm. There wasn't glitter on it or anything like that. Oh, no. Enough, no. Really. No. Glitter on what? On the handbag to lead him to uh, look into it, you see. Very suspicious policemen, these. Yes. <laughs> yes. Open house, please. Well, Paula. I'd like to ask um, Harry. Um, did, did Ron know that he was going to... He was for the chop. He was going to be dropped from the group. No. He didn't. So, presumably, you were going to have the, the nasty job of having to tell him? Well, it wasn't a question of dropping him. It was just a question of building up uh, Jim. So he wasn't actually going to be completely dropped from the group, but he was going to be dropped as the leader of the group? Well, I mean, he was, he was getting the chop as the leader, yeah. Yeah, so presumably you would have to tell him sooner or later. That that was well, I wouldn't. The powers that be would. Well, I thought you were the powers that be. Uh, I would not be controlling the amounts of money that were going to be sort of inflected into the group. Well, I thought you said that you controlled everything to do with the group. You made all the decisions. Oh, I make yes. all the decisions, yes, of course. He is, somebody is putting he, in a fortune, then yes. uh, they have the controlling... He's just the manager I'm just the manager. The I take is, my percentage There is money behind world. it, like yes, most I have things. a question yeah. about the money, actually. Yes, yeah. please. Money Anushka it. has a question about money. Where were you getting the money from for the new promotion that mm -hmm. you were going to do? You well, the money was coming from a recording company. 
Why? Why were they suddenly going to give you some money when you're dropping Ron and coming in with an unknown, so to speak? Well, it wasn't my idea to drop Ron. I mean, the idea of dropping Ron was theirs because they wanted to build up gin. Oh, I see. What was the recording company's name? I can't say that because they haven't signed anything yet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can I ask yes, you? No, not for the minute. Thank you very much. Ready for the next replay, uh, which is Paula's. Uh, she wants to see Jim and Jenny putting on the white trousers backstage in the corridor. <laughs> mm. I beg your pardon? Trousers. So where did you change? Well, just out there in the corridor. Third time, One, two, three, three, up, go, gently does it. I'm breathing in. Oh, right, there you are. Goodness. They look all right. Beautiful. Splendid. Right. Come on. <laughs> yes, did that yes. help you? Yeah, uh, well, I can think I can quite confidently say that I'm no wiser. Ah. <laughs> uh, no, putting where the trousers you, on, I was wondering why after you thought you'd, that might help After you'd, you'd put the trousers on, where were you going after that? Back in the dressing Back room. The dressing room. Mm -hmm. And then after <coughs> the inspector was talking to you, then you went out of the dressing room again, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, came back on the stage and came and sat in the hall. You went onto the stage then, did you? Yeah, you have to go across the stage to get back into the hall from the dressing room. Oh, I see. OK. Yes, Richard? Well, you see, we've got Detective Martin here. Mm hmm And uh, he starts off his investigation with his hat on. You know, then... <laughs> Halfway through, he decides to take it off. I mean, usually detectives, as soon as they come in, they, you see it, they always take their hat off, don't they? So, I mean, he could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd like to see your warrant card, please. <laughs> That's a very good question. I see no reason why you shouldn't. Uh, Inspector, would you like to show your warrant card? Uh, he'll be seeing my warrant card. I'm arresting him next week. <laughs> <laughs> And I've got a very quick question for Harry, the yes, manager. Yes, please. How long has this relationship been going on between you and, um, and, uh, hang on, you and Tony? <laughs> <laughs> there is no relationship. Oh, come on, don't Tony deny it. <laughs> <laughs> he won't answer my question. I think you're forcing them into a relationship. <laughs> you're not prepared to answer that? I'm not, no. Fine. Can I ask Jim a question? Yes, of course. Uh, Jim, did you know that uh, Harry had uh, big ideas for you? Well, uh, it made a few sort of uh, hints. It uh, suggested that it might be worth my while to stay on with them, because I wasn't very pleased, you see, with the yeah. way things were going. And would, would it have made a lot more money to you, or were you all on the same sort of percentage? I wasn't. Uh, we're, uh, we're all on the same percentage, but um, he'd hinted that maybe... Uh, there'd be a bit more coming So, in way. fact, the, the death of your poor unfortunate guy was, uh, was very nice for you, if, you know, I mean, I'm sure you're sorry about well, it. Well, um, I'm uh, very sorry about it, actually, but um, I suppose in another way, professionally speaking, I'm quite pleased. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you, Jim. Uh, Patrick Bloodhound Moa, uh, you want a replay of the discussion Inspector Martin had with Dave the drummer. Well, to help the inspector, let's see what it does for you. What kind of blackmail? Well, how much? Go on, tell me. Half of what I had earned. It'd break the band up if Jim found out. He'd break me up. Ron knew that. Oh, I'm glad it happened. I got so paranoid I didn't let me left hand know what my right hand was doing. I'll tell you this. If it had gone on, I'd have taken the pills and OD. Do you know who killed Ron, then? Right. Right. Well, first of all, uh, what's that bit of dialogue about you'd have taken the pills and OD'd? What's that mean? Well, an overdose, you know? Oh, you'd have overdosed, I see. Yeah. When, uh, I, I believe that you were asked before, wh when you were going up the stairs, um, wh who did you leave in the dressing room? Can you remember? No idea. Hmm. there? I think, the, yeah, they, they were, were all there. there. All they there were at the time there. when I went. They were all there. Mm. I think so, yeah, as far as I can remember. Yeah, can, I, can I ask Detective Inspector Martin another question? When Jenny sort of said to you she couldn't get the ring off her finger and said, oh, I've got to call the fire brigade or whatever, did you go ahead and ask her to take the ring off or did you just take her word for it? It wasn't necessary. I could see with the pressure of the, the blood pressure on the finger that it was impossible to get that ring off. Oh, and now it was going like... Oh, oh yes, it was quite, quite clear. We, you know, one gets experience of these things and it's <laughs> quite obvious. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. The, uh, the, the nail goes black, doesn't it? <laughs> sort of, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Can I look at your finger, your hand, Jenny, please? Oh, yes, very black. Obvious, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Can I just ask uh, Dave another question? Did, uh, did the, all of the group know that you were... Who knew that you were being blackmailed? 
Well, Ron was the main guy. Yeah. And did you hope, if, if, this, if, uh, if Ron was got rid of uh, and Jim became a, a superstar, wouldn't that stop your relationship with Jenny more than assist it? No. I mean, we're really into each other, you know. But I mean, if... if <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a phrase that... that <laughs> I'm thinking. Right, last question, please. <laughs> Right, last question each. Quick one, Richard. All right, uh, Tony, uh, can you tell me that the guitar, w was it acoustic? No, it's a solid, solid electric guitar. Electric guitar, yes. Anushka. No, I want to know exactly who owned the rubber gloves. She wants to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> who owned the rubber gloves? Those were they? The Nobody ownership knows. hasn't been proved yet. Patrick. Tony, would it be relatively easy for anybody in the group to know how to connect the plug and, and re rewire it so that somebody would die? Yeah, I think so, because uh, the basic wiring of a plug is... They, all, they were all fairly... Um, they knew what you did. Well, there's a right and a wrong way to wire up a plug, and most people could suss that out, yeah. Yeah. Right. Paula, ask, yes? Harry, when you first arrived at the theatre and you, and you went into the dressing room, what were you actually carrying? What did you bring into the, into the dressing room? I bought room? in the new, the new jackets. The new jackets? Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Time is up, panel. I want you now to fill in your cards and any clues that you may have sussed out. Now, that also applies to our audience panel as well. Remember, a correct answer could win you a whodunit trophy. Right, I'm now, I'm now, but I'm now going to collect the cards. Going to collect the cards I am from Paula. Who I say, interesting. That's very good. Thank you, Anushka. How many chapters have you written? What up, Bloodhound? Has <laughs> 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 he got it right again? I shan't tell you yet. <laughs> right. Now, before I ask the panel who did it, let me see if we have a winner from our studio audience. No. <laughs> no. No. No, oh. but oh. Mr. Alistair Sharp has got the clues right, but he didn't get the name of the murderer right. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> well, well done. <laughs> well. well done, Mr. Sharp. All right, panel, it's your turn. Paula, a who done it? I don't and know. why? <laughs> um, well, Right, here I go. I think it was Jenny and Dave. And I, th I, th I think it was Jenny, because I, I don't really think that a man could get the gloves and the ring on. Mm -hmm. Because I think it would need little tiny, delicate feminine fingers to get the big rubber glove and the, and the ring on top of. So I think it was Jenny. But I think it's a bit too convenient that Dave happened to lose his ring and the murderer happened to pick it up. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a bit of collusion, collusion between, between the two, the two. of them. Fine. Richard. Well, it's obviously Dave the drummer did it. Mm. Yes. Dave the drummer. <laughs> Dave the drummer. Yes, Dave the drummer, because, in fact, he is left-handed and he is the only drummer who has the hi-hat on the left for a left-handed drummer, because all left-handed drummers have the hi-hat on the right, but that's why he is Dave the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Hang on, there's more. the yeah, point is, you see, now, that we don't have any time for now. <laughs> oh, said, no, dear. We, we're now going to ask Anushka, Hem Anushka Hempel to give us a now. Who did it? Anushka? Well, I think Dave the drummer did it, but we're not with anything else except himself. Um, and I think he planted the gloves in Jenny's bag. I don't, I don't know when, but um, when he said he didn't know what he, either of his, what his, le his left hand didn't know what his right hand was doing, Etc. He made too much fuss of losing his ring. Um, <laughs> Jenny and Harry were left-handed throughout the whole thing. She kept dabbing her nose with the left hand and he kept puffing with his left hand. So it could have been either one of them, but when Dave said he didn't, he gave that thing away when he said he didn't know what his left mm. hand was doing, blah, 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 mm. I think he did it. And I also think he would stop the blackmailing business going on, and I also think that he wanted to be the lead one day when Jenny divorces Jim. I see. Yes, very, very succinctly put. Uh, yes, 
Bloodhound, what about you? Well, I said that without moving my lips. I agree entirely. Dave, in fact, I disagree with Richard. No, Dave is right-handed, but he knew that uh, probably he wanted to put the blame onto Harry uh, for some reason, reasons unknown, but so therefore he put glitter on the screwdriver and put it into left hand and did the fiddle with it that. Uh, um, his own ring must have been big enough to go over the top at the outside of the glove. Uh, he, of course, he got very good reason because he's been blackmailed. Um, he did the deed when he went upstairs. He also said something about the ring being in his possession when the coats were brought in. Um, Excuse me, what did you say about left-handed? Well, I don't, I, I clocked that Harry and Jenny were left handed and of course so uh, the PC was left handed. Well, I, I suspected you for a while, but I don't know. Um, and I think that, uh, that in fact Dave is right handed and he, he mixed, are you confused? No, yes, he who knew. did you think, no, no, excuse me, I'm asking, wh wh who did you think was left handed? I think that uh, Jenny and uh, 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 Harry. Is it Harry? Harry, our left hand, yes. and the policeman. I see. And I think that... Uh, Good, thank you very much indeed. Yes, we, we are now all of us utterly confused. <laughs> so, stand by for the big moment, the big Harry. reveal. Will the real who done it stand up, please? Oh, it's bloody Harry. No way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, you were all very, very close, but not <laughs> quite right. Yes, it was Harry Cook, the group's manager. <laughs> By killing Ron, he hoped to make a fortune from the promised recordings to come with Jim as the lead singer. Now, when he came in behind the others, you should have noticed that he carried his black and white jacket as well as the new white ones. And then he hid the jacket outside with the rubber gloves and the screwdriver in the pocket. So, when he walked into the dressing room, his black and white jacket was no longer there. In the dressing room, he slipped Dave's black ring into his pocket to plant by the plug later. Now, the main clue, of course, is that glitter. It was on the screwdriver and the left-hand glove only. Now, did you spot the three left-handed people? One was the sergeant, but he had no motive unless he didn't like the music. And then there was Jenny, but she couldn't get the ring off her finger, so she couldn't have worn the rubber glove. Which leaves Harry, the manager, left-handed and everything to gain. Now, he lit his cigarette left-handed, he wore his watch on his right wrist. All the clues were there, and if you solved it, well done. If not, there's another chance next week when you can match your wits against another murderer. There, I've already given you a clue. And for those of you who are interested in the progress of the weasels, I'm sure that you'll all be very pleased to hear that so far they are the only act to have come last in both new faces and opportunity knocks. <laughs> Personally, I give them two for nerve. Goodbye from our panel and from me. Goodbye. <laughs>